Yo guys, what is happening? What is going on? What is good? Welcome back to another video. I recently purchased a watch that I've been wanting to buy for like the past maybe a year now and I got it. I got it. So I'm going to be taking some really nice, cool, cinematic, dark, moody product photos using only one piece of paper and one artificial light. Uh, it is a very cheap light. You can find it on Amazon. It's one of those lights that you first purchase when you feel like, you know, I need to start using like artificial light now. You buy it, it's very cheap. You realize after like a couple years, it's really crap. But we can actually make it look pretty good for these photos. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. That's all we're gonna use. So let's begin, man. I think I can only film around here because it's like eight o'clock in the morning. It's still very dark. Today is a cloudy day. We've had sun for like the past, I think, uh, maybe a couple weeks now, which is another reason why I haven't been able to do this video a lot earlier um, because it's just been very, very sunny. And the problem with having sunny days is that I cannot black out my room, which is something that you will need to do. You will need to make sure you can black out your room as much as possible because we do not want natural light. If you want to watch videos on how to do product photography with natural lights, I did like a couple videos um, showing that and it looks really good. So you can go ahead and check those out. Otherwise, stay tuned. We need this for a bit of diffusion so it makes the light a lot less harsh. We're gonna need, oh, come on, man. There's so much junk here. Oh, we have two of them. I thought I lost this. Okay, this will prove very handy. The more diffused, the better, and I'll show you why later. This guy. And we'll get this guy. When you are making the stand, you wanna make sure that the bottom is like quite spread out. The larger the surface area, the more balance is gonna be because obviously when we bring it up, you're gonna be adding weight with a light. And what's gonna happen is if that is too narrow, the light is just gonna end up tipping over and is gonna fall and you don't want that. I'm telling you everyone, this ain't no Godox or Aperture Lights. This is like the one with no brand name on it. It is like the cheapest one that you can find. All right, I have no idea what brand these are. It's like one of those cheap Chinese ones, once again from Amazon, but it'll do. All right, it's gonna look a little something like this. Yep. No idea why that sound's happening. All right, and we're just gonna screw it on to here, like so. So the cool thing about these light bulbs is that they actually do not heat up. So for example, there are a lot of lights where if you use it for a long period of time, you have to wait for it to cool down before you can touch it. These ones, you could leave it on for like an hour, two hours. You turn it off, touch it, it is cool, which means you can just unscrew the light bulb, pack it, and you're good to go. So that's something that I really like. Uh, but yeah, so, so far we have our light setup. I'm going to add now, I'm gonna actually add two diffusions to it instead of one. So the, what the diffusion does, in fact, see the clouds here, all right? So think of these sheets as the clouds. So the clouds are diffusing the sun, which means you don't get like harsh shadows and harsh light hitting this. You get like a nice soft light. It creates a very even light on everything. And that's what we're going to be using uh, with these. So these actually make the light less intense and it adds a nice soft light to the image. The softer the light, the more, I guess, attractive it's going to look. One, two, three, done. Next up, you're gonna wanna get some paper. Now, black is fantastic for these types of photos that we're gonna get. We're good, just gonna get some nice clean, uh, just some nice clean photos. So black is perfect for it. And the cool thing is that the smaller the product, the smaller the paper needs to be. So once again, I think this might be like A3, no, A4, I think, no. A3, I think this is A3 paper. A4 is just a little bit smaller. If you can get even bigger than that, then perfect. If not, that should do. Um, so yeah, we're pretty much all, oh, we need to get, there we go, the watch, like that. All right, let's turn this bad boy on. Before I turn off 
closed all the blinds and everything. Um, what you want to do is sort out the reflections. Now there's always going to be reflections. This is just something that we can't really avoid that much. Uh, it's pretty impossible. So what we want to do first of all is to just make sure that the light is off to the side because we would prefer reflections on the side instead of right at the top, right? Because you won't be able to see the light. You see what I mean? So maybe if we actually even pull that a bit more this way, we can get the reflections just on the outside of the watch rather than on the face of it, all right? And we still have like a beautiful light shiny on here. So it's gonna take a bit of time to just adjust, but that is what's gonna take the most time to do is adjusting the light, getting the light source perfect. And the reason why we are using one light source instead of like two or three is that one light source actually creates that nice cinematic look. It creates the shadows, you know what I mean? So you get a nice like shadow and then light. One side is light, one side is shadows. Whereas with multiple lights, it starts to just like light every side of the image and it gets it a bit too bright. And I mean, if you want that sort of look, that's absolutely fine, but we're not going for that look. We're going for like a like a nice cinematic, moody, dark kind of look, especially for a watch like this. It's more like, it's a very classy, like I'm gonna go out for dinner type watch, you know? If you've got like a G-Shock, like a baby G or something like that, or like a nice pink watch, then fair enough, brighten that up because that kind of reflects more of like a spring summertime type vibe. But for something like this, Elegance, you want it a bit more darker, you know? You want the shadows in there, you want it to look classy, you want it to look moody. So that's what we're going for. And for that type of image, one light source is absolutely perfect, which sounds strange, doesn't it? But there you go. All right, so we're gonna fill around with this for a little bit, get what we need, and then it's gonna get time to, the, the, uh, we're gonna take the photos. I've got my light set up to how I think it's going to look best and we've got the watch there. I've actually just buckled, this is what I like about like leather straps is that you can buckle it and it's just gonna stay up. So we've got that there and I think we're actually good to go. Once again, we're getting a bit of reflection there but this is actually an okay reflection. It adds a little bit to the image, you know what I mean? Like that corner just there, it looks quite nice. Um, so when we take the photo, we're gonna just try and avoid taking photos like that. We're just blocking out the entire, um, watch. Whereas if we do something like that, eh, it looks pretty nice. Not too bad, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, let's, uh, in fact, let's talk um, equipment that we're going to use to take the photo. I was originally going to use my Sony A7S Mark I with my beautiful Sigma 35mm 1.4 art lens, but I left that set up at one of my client's uh, shops, uh, so I don't have it with me. So I'm going to be using my Canon 70D with the Sigma 18 to 35 mil f1.8. Now, in terms of settings, I'm going to use uh, f4 uh, to take the product photos because, um, I mean, I find that with f2.8, f1.8, f1.4, it gets a bit too shallow. And for product photography, they say you should take photos like f3, f4 best because you'll get pretty much everything that you want in focus and then the background is gonna be blurry. We don't need everything to be too blurry in the background, you know? For things like portraits, that's really nice, but for product photos, ooh, it's a bit too bright, but for product photos, we want most of the stuff to be in focus. Okay, so here are all the photos. Uh, they actually look pretty awesome, man, I ain't gonna lie. I really like these ones this one specifically where it's just like off to the side a little bit. There's just something about that angle that I really, really like. So um, all I'm going to really do to these photos because I quite like how they look in general, but there are a couple of things that I wanna do. For example, I just wanna darken it a little bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring the exposure down um, so that this is actually highlighted a lot more as well um, because we're darkening this section here and it just makes this pop more. I'm gonna also play around with the contrast a little bit. By the way, sorry that it's just too dark, but it's just a very dark day today. Uh, bring the shadows down as well and then the blacks and then I'll just play around with the exposure and stuff, but I'm not going to do too much because I am just very happy with how these photos look in general. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play around with all these photos because we've taken a total of 37 and I only really want four photos. So yeah, I'm gonna find the best ones. I quite like these ones here as well. 
that's just, I just find this, I don't know, something about it is very nice, just the light and just the composition and stuff. So for example, with this, there's not really much that I want to do. I should have actually cleaned my watch, but you know, for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna really, you know, make it a huge bother. Um, but yeah, something like that is just, you know, really, really nice. This one, I'm actually gonna bring the exposure up a little bit. I don't mind seeing the background because it looks very nice. And also because the watch isn't on the uh, on the piece of paper, you can't see the little artifacts that are on it because it's blurred out. So it you know it actually doesn't look like a flat lay photo. It looks like we use the backdrop. So I quite like that. Um, so that's gonna be a winner actually. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna play around with these photos, and here are the photos, man. In fact, before I go, uh, I'm just gonna say make sure you subscribe, like this video, comment, and uh, yeah, follow me on all the social media apps and stuff.